Video number four today of uh, simple machines, and we've been talking about pulleys specifically. So we, we introduced compound machines last time, and I feel like I need to give this example here because it's a compound machine, it's not a block and tackle. The reason I know this is because a block and tackle has a single rope, and this looks like I have three different ropes. See one right here that's secured here on the ceiling, and I'm looping around and pulling it up. A second rope that's secured around the ceiling, looping it around, and I'm pulling up and attaching it to the first pulley. A third rope here, looped around, attached to this pulley, okay? So so there's three different ropes here, which means it's not a block and tackle. A block and tackle has a single rope, okay, not multiple. And so how do we treat this problem? Is it different? Okay, because if there's a block and tackle, I would simply go one, two, three, four, five, six upward arrows. I have a mechanical advantage of six, right, compared to the downward force. But this is different. This is a compound machine. See, what it is is it's three movable pulleys attached together with multiple ropes. So what do I do? Okay, and so what I want to do is I want to start with this. Okay, I have a downward force here, right? So I'm looking for the upward strands. And if I look at just this, if it was just this pulley, that means that I would have an upward and an upward here. I would have a mechanical advantage of two from this movable pulley. So I have a mechanical advantage right here of two. If I look at this pulley individually, each rope, right? And so I have, remember, here's the weight of the system is pulling downward from here. So if I look at upward ropes, then I have an upward rope here and an upward rope here. So I'm only looking at this portion of the machine, okay? I have a mechanical advantage of two from the second pulley. And if I only look at this piece here, okay, so this is the weight of the object, the rest of the machine, right, down here. Okay, so it's pulling downward. If I look at the upward forces, I have an upward force here and an upward force here. So this movable pulley, again, gives me a mechanical advantage of two. So each of the machine, the pulleys by themselves gives a mechanical advantage of two. So what do I do? Well, with a compound machine with multiple simple machines put together, even if they're all pulleys, the same type of machine, I take the three mechanical advantages and I multiply them together. So the total mechanical advantage would be two times two times two, a total mechanical advantage of eight. That means that if this is 80 pounds, I would need to lift with 10 pounds of force in order to lift this thing or to keep it from falling or to keep it from, from rising at an accelerated rate, okay? Um, another way to look at this, okay, if you wanna look at this um, more conceptually, if I look at these two, if I take the 80 pounds and I split it between the two ropes, that means I have 40 pounds on this one and 40 pounds on this one. So now, knowing that I have 40 pounds of force on this rope pulling downward, that means that that would be split and I'd have 20 on each of these. And now, if I look at just this piece and I have 20 pounds of force going downward, that means that I had 10 on each of these. So I had to pull upward with 10 in order to lift this 80 pound force, okay? Mechanical advantage, which we know is how much force I got to lift based on how much I put it in, Okay, that would be in this case, I lifted 80 pounds and I used 10 pounds of force. The mechanical advantage had to be eight. There's another way to look at it, okay? So that's a compound machine because it's more than one rope. Please, please do not get that confused with this kind of a system where I have lots of pulleys, yeah, but one rope that I'm using to pull it. So hopefully that makes sense. I have one more. Well, actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and finish off. The last thing I want to point out here is just a little conceptual thing, no math involved, okay? But it's the question this, do, do angles matter, okay? And the idea is this, okay, let's, so if I took a, a pulley here and I attached it and I went like this and I pulled upward, okay? Or if I, uh, if I took the pulley here and fixed it and I'm lifting an object and it's over here and uh, I'm pulling downward like this, are those the same situation, okay? Is it, does it matter if I pull straight up or if I pull like this direction, okay? What if I pulled this direction instead? Does that make a difference? And the answer is, yeah, absolutely it does, okay? Because if I'm talking about the number of strands that oppose the force, I'm talking about if I have something hanging here and it's pulling downward, then I'm interested in the strands that are pulling up. This one's pulling up, definitely, but this one's kind of pulling up, okay? In order to figure that out, what we'd be actually interested in is we, we're gonna break this into components, and I notice that this thing is pulling upward and it's pulling to the right, isn't it? Okay, it's pulling up and to the right. And I'm really only interested in the portion, the percentage of the force that's pulling upward, that thing right there. But in order to figure that out, that requires something called trigonometry. We're gonna use in uh, Pythagorean theorem and sines and cosines and tangents, and you may not have even heard those words yet. Okay, and that's fine because we'll get to those in a later unit in the course. But since we haven't used them yet, we're not gonna worry about it now. Just know this, angles do matter angles absolutely matter, 
but for right now we're going to assume that we're not doing anything with angles for this course yet. So hopefully that kind of makes sense a little bit, okay? Just know that the angles will come into play. It actually makes things tougher. You have to pull with more, more force, okay? And, and that'll be good for now. So this is it for the videos on simple pulleys and compound machines. You should have what you need in order to do the homework.